All right, so you have to make sure you're getting 2.4 micrograms of vitamin B12 every day in order to keep your energy up and your red blood cells uh, functioning to carry the oxygen through your body. Hi, welcome to the Judy Terrell Show where I explore topics intended to optimize every body 50, 60, 70, and above. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Your Second 50. If you're joining me on this episode, then you are on my my series number 12, and my topic for this series, which is a six-part series, um, my topic is, what are foods that you can ingest as part of your daily habit patterns that will help you to have more energy. Um, I work with uh, 50 plus individuals, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and beyond now. Um, I myself am 60 years old, and I have focused in on the 50 plus market, men and women both, for over a decade now. And I've been in the uh, health and wellness industry for 42 years. And so my goal with this series and with all the things that I put out is using my experience and in the trenches every day, day after day for 42 years with individuals. And what have I learned that can I can relay that can best help people that are looking for what my clients are looking for that are over 50, 60, and 70. And one of the main things that many of my clients come to me to get help with from a behavioral changing methods or behavioral medicine or lifestyle medicine, some key words that are put out now for um, how to approach optimal well-being without taking um, supplements or without taking medications. I am all about making lifestyle changes and helping my clients, helping you who are watching this series to get more energy in your everyday life from the everyday things that you are doing. And of course, one of the everyday things we do is eat. And so it's a very, very um, potent place for us to help ourselves to have optimal well-being. All right. So this series, series number 12, and each of my series has six episodes. So this will, this one also will have six episodes. So I'm going to tell you six things that I am going to educate you about so you can make your own informed decisions as to what you can put into your vehicle that is coming from nature. Um, that is not a supplement, but is a, you know, food or a product of food, um, that you can use to help your daily energy. All right. And so this is episode one, and I'm going to tell you, um, I've chosen this particular, um, element in food and what foods I'm going to educate you as to have, what has it, um, because of its like its importance. All right. And the, element that I'm going to tell you that we want to try and get more in, in our everyday eating, that's going to help with energy. One of the six is the B vitamins family, and in particular, vitamin B12. All right. And so let's talk about that for a second. Like there, everyone knows that there's macronutrients, carb, protein, fat, um, but there are also things called micronutrients, and those are vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, um, and things, elements that are in the foods that we eat that are smaller amounts, but are important to our life and absolutely to our optimal well-being. So B vitamins are one of, you know, there's vitamin A, vitamin Bs, a family of them, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin D. We all know about vitamins and we all know that we need them in our bodies to, you know, do chemical reactions to keep us alive, number one, but alive and well and optimal. All right. So the B uh, complex of vitamins um, are in many, many foods. All right. And the B vitamins in particular, B vitamin uh, B12 um, isn't in a lot, all the foods that we may think. And so um, I'm going to tell you what the B12 is in. But before I do, let me tell you why B12 in particular is very important for this topic that I'm addressing here in this series, and that is, uh, you know, higher energy. So B12, in particular of the B vitamins, is involved with um, um, strengthening the blood cells, regeneration, repair, rebuilding of the blood cells, the red blood cells of our, you know, blood. And what does blood do? Why is blood so important to us? You know, many reasons, but one of the primary reasons is, blood and red blood cells 
takes oxygen from our lungs as we're breathing and then carries it to all the cells of our body. And we all know that if you don't breathe, you stop breathing, you are literally dead, brain dead, and then dead dead within seven minutes. All right. Oxygen is critical. It is the elixir of life for human beings and for plants and everything else on the, on the earth. Um, so our red blood cells being able to optimally carry oxygen from the lungs and then into the bloodstream and then transport it through the arteries into the capillaries into every cell of our body is critical for life, but critical for energy. Um, oxygen through the body, oxygen into the cells where the mitochondria are breaking down fats and, and glucose and creating the work of our, of our bodies, um, our breathing, our respiration, our thinking, and then of course our activity, our movement. The red blood cells are so important to energy and vitamin B12 is important to keeping the maximal number of red blood cells and to keep the red blood cells that we have at optimal condition. So repairing and rebuilding them. So that is why vitamin B12 is so important to life and why I'm highlighting it as the number one thing I'm addressing for my six part series in what do we need to, what can we eat that will enhance our energy because not only is oxygen important to life, it's, in, it's important to having energy, right? So B12, very, very important. Now, I am not in this series suggesting supplements. I don't necessarily believe in them. Um, not that I don't think there's times and places to take supplements, but what I'm trying to teach in these series is, you know, what is the nature of this being and this vehicle and how do we come in harmony with that so I'm talking about how to get the B vitamins, in particular B12, through our food. I am so excited to announce your second50.life. I have been working in the fitness industry with individuals, both men and women, over 50 years old for 42 years and really specialized in the last 10 on over 50. I'm over 50 myself by a long shot. And I've helped literally thousands of men and women both to lose the extra body fat that they gain in the second half of their life. Two, feel better in their own bodies energetically. Uh, I have helped people to reverse and eliminate health problems, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, pre-diabetes, um, symptoms of menopause, um, to name just a few. On this platform, you will have access to a entire body of resources, exercise videos, uh, mini courses, eating plans that are specially designed for over 50 men and women because there's special needs for our demographic. And in addition to the virtual resources that you'll have access to if you join at any time that you'd like, you also have access to me for one-on-one -on -one coaching through a, a group coach call every month. So you can bring your specifics and we can address those as you're also getting information that is specific to the over 50 population, 50s, 60s, 70s, and now 80s is the demographic that I'm working with. So it's your second 50 dot life, Y-O-U-R-S-E-C-O-N-D, 5 -O dot life. Go check it out. It might be the, the single best thing that you've looked at like in your second 50s. So now I have to tell you like, what are foods that are high in B vitamins? and B12 in particular. And this is where it's going to get a little controversial because first thing I'm going to tell you is that plants can't make B12. All right. If you want to naturally get B12, you have to be ingesting some sort of an animal. All right. And right now, um, this is 2023, plant-based eating, veganism, save the planet is, is very in vogue. Um, I'm not going to make a philosophical position for you on whether you want to be a vegan or not, but I'm going to tell you if you're not a vegan, then you need to, you know, you need to get the B12 from animals. Why? Ruminators like cows and chickens and, and animals that eat plants because of the particular digestive, um, you know, flora in their, um, in their digestive systems, the bacteria that live in the ruminants, the animals that eat plants, they are the ones that can then make B12. And then that goes into the animal's flesh. And then we eat the animal. All right. 
And that is because the animals need B12 because they have blood, okay? Plants don't have blood, so plants have no evolutionary reason for making B12. And that is one of the reasons why plants are very, they're not low in all the B vitamins, but they're very low in B12, all right? So if you want to be a vegan and you want to naturally take in B12 and not take it from a supplement or from a supplement that's been now put into another food to fortify it, which you can do, fortified cereals, uh, fortified food products will add B12 from a supplement that's been pulled out of animals and then put into food to boost the B12. But I'll tell you this, if you're a vegan and you want to stay a vegan, then you've got to be adding in algae or fungi um, or brewer's yeast, like yeasts, because algae, fungi, and yeast are actually like animals, all right? And they can make B12 more so than plants, less so than, you know, animals that are, that have blood in them, okay? So if you are not a vegan, all right, what are some of the predominant sources of B12 um, that you can ingest on a regular basis, all right? Um, all your, your um, seafoods, uh, but in particular, oysters, clams, and mussels, all right? Your land animals, your uh, pork, beef, poultry. Um, if you're ingesting these animals, now, this is, a, this is a hot topic because, you know, agribusiness and hormone ingested into these animals and the mass production of them and the effect they're having on the ozone layer and the global warming and all that, very, very emotionally laid in hot topics. I want to address that in this series. I'm just merely telling you that one of the main things that you can ingest into your being to increase energy as you're getting older, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, is B12. And if you want to take it from a natural source, you have to get it from an animal. If you don't want to eat from agribusiness, you know, these mass production places for a variety of reasons, inhumane practices, you know, all sorts of things, then find grass pasture raised local produce, uh, local farmers that are producing these animals. There's ways to get that in that can be philosophically in harmony with saving the planet. Um, but you have to ingest from the animal, all right? Um, if you want to be a vegan, however, and you're standing firm in that, then um, nutritional yeast and brewer's yeast, um, spirulina or various seaweeds that are actually algae, um, these uh, fermented products like tempeh, um, kefir, um, and, uh, what's my third one I wanted to just tell you? Oh, sauerkraut, things that are fermented because they're fermented by yeast and molds and they can produce the B vitamins, uh, in particular B12. That is your way of possibly getting this in, but you have to really focus in because everybody needs a 2.4, um, micrograms of B12 a day. All right. And many of us are falling short of that if we're not eating enough animal products. And right now, a lot of my clients that are over 50 and definitely over 60 are moving into wanting to eat less animal products and now are finding that they're having some energy, you know, issues and weight gain. Another one I see. But, um, but there, I, they, I have to educate them how to get the B vitamin, B12 in particular, if you are trying to be more plant based. All right, so you have to make sure you're getting 2.4 micrograms of vitamin B12 every day in order to keep your energy up and your red blood cells uh, functioning to carry the oxygen through your body. All right, so B12, very important. Um, you can take it in a supplement form, but again, if you're a vegan, you want to make sure that it's not coming from an animal source, um, in which case, again, you're back to having to get it from brewer's yeast, nutritional yeast, or an algae, or spirulina, so look into those things. But if you're not a vegan, um, and even if you're a vegetarian, so you can kind of get the best of both worlds in the sense of eating a high plant-based diet, but then you would be eating eggs, which are also high in B12, um, animal byproducts would have the B12s in it. Um, there's uh, pescatarian, vegetarian, so you're eating fish, so you're getting it in from that. Just check and double, you know, look up how many milligrams um, are in, um, or micrograms, I'm sorry, are in what you're eating to make sure you're getting that 2.4 daily that is recommended as optimal. 
All right, everybody. So this is part one of my six part series on what are foods that we can take in on a daily basis that is going to help our energy as we are aging. All right. I, you know, I don't think we're going to stop aging. Um, maybe we will, but you know, it's, it's happening. You know, that might take a little more time. And those of us who are in our sixties, seventies and eighties might not be around by the time they identify and reverse that process. So in the meantime, I want to give you some things that can optimize your energy as we are aging. All right. And I want to do it in a state. I'm going to tell you about how to take it in. That's in a state that we evolved to be taking in and is not a supplement. Um, it is coming from a natural food source. All right, everybody. So I hope you learned something in this uh, episode. I hope you join me for the next five in this series. Um, this series and others are included in my your second 50 platform, which is a just a, a huge resource that is growing every month. I'm adding to it on things like this and, and exercise and eating and lifestyle and thinking patterns and sleep and everything related to optimizing as we're getting over into our second 50s. And it's for men and women both. So please check that platform out. Go to my website. Take a look at what I have available there for one-on-one -on -one consulting. Um, and I hope to see you soon on the next episode of this series. And as always, my goal for myself, my goal for anybody that I'm working with, is let's make our second 50 even better than our first. So thanks for joining me, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening, everybody. And if you'd like to have access to more of my resources then you can reach me at Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You can go to my new platform at yoursecond50.life. That is Y-O-U-R-S-E-C-O-N-D-5-O.life or at my website, www.judyterrell.com.